How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be taking you through an online game that I played the other day where I played a Karakon defend... Karakon? Karakan? I don't know. You get what I mean. Um, online against a really high rated player. Um, I'm going to jump, jump straight into the game but quickly um, I'd really appreciate it if you do enjoy the video to drop a like and subscribe as I'm a small channel. I'm trying to grow. You know how it is. Um, Got to challenge the behemoths. Um, but with that, let's just get into it. Um, so we have the Karo. The advanced variation. And the Karo Khan often has like a reputation for being quite a boring opening. It really depends how you play it. If you play it in this way, maybe it is boring. Maybe. But I go for C5. Uh, just instantly challenging the center. It's a really popular line at the moment. We have D takes C5, Knight C6, attacking the pawn, um, and causing white to defend it. Then I go Bishop G4, pinning the knight, and then therefore threatening to take the pawn. Bishop B5 pins my knight to my king, so both knights are pinned by the light squared bishops. Although this is an absolute pin where I literally can't move my knight. This is not an absolute pin because white technically can move his knight because it's not against the rules to lose your queen, but probably not ideal either. I go e6, which opens up the dark squared bishop to attack c5 and just lend some support to the d5 pawn. Bishop e3 is played, defending the pawn. The computer hates this and wants b4 straight away, which the knight obviously can't take because it's pinned. But my 2300 rated opponent goes for bishop e3, so we're going to trust him on this. I go knight e7, which again the computer doesn't like, but it also, it says it's a miss, but it's also its favourite move, like according to the engine, so <laughs> I don't really know what that's about. But I'm basically planning to come to f5 to attack this bishop. Or possibly to g6 to attack the e5 pawn. So my opponent goes knight bd2. Which I was really happy to see because I was expecting c3. And then, uh, and then here, here. And then if I take, then he could potentially take like this. So seeing knight bd2 I was happy about. Because the bishop can't go to d4 now because the knight's pinned. So it has got no defense. So my opponent plays b4, defending the c5 pawn, and I take on e3 to really damage the structure. White's got two sets of double pawns, one set of them are isolated. So even though I'm down a pawn, this is technically a gambit, White, White, White's pawns are not impressive whatsoever, so I'm not really worried about it. I go a5, challenging the base of his pawn structure. If he takes, he has three sets of doubled isolated pawns, and I can I can go queen a5, or I can go bishop c5. Um, I've got a very nice position, but my opponent plays c3, which is logical, obviously, so that he defends the pawn that defends the other pawn. I take, take, and then I play a move I was really happy with. I play rook a3. And the idea is, not only do I attack the e3 pawn, but I also stop the move a3, which would defend b4, right? Because my rook's in the way. My opponent goes knight b3, which blocks my attack on the e3 pawn, and also lends extra support to c5. Remember, I still can't take this pawn or this pawn because I'm pinned. I go bishop e7. Computer didn't really like that. It wanted me to take. And then play queen h4 check. That is very nice. I did not see that. It's it's difficult even at this level to spot those like long range. Sort of like the queen maneuvering from d8 all the way to b4. You know. Especially with the trade. But I played bishop e7. Which made sense to me because I want to castle 
and then force white to take because otherwise my knight's going to jump in because the pin will be alleviated. And then I feel like I can do some damage. My opponent goes queen c1, attacking the rook, defending e3, defending c5, and also removing this pin. I go queen a8, which is the best move to defend the rook and also lend support to my knight through the pawn, right? Queen a8 is such a weird move, like visually, but you know, if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because this rook is really frustrating for white because he'd love to play a3 and just shore up shore up the pawn chain but he can't so my opponent goes knight fd4 because it's no longer pinned and it's part of the reason i played queen a8 so that the knight wouldn't be hanging i castle plays bishop takes c6 b takes c6 and white can play knight takes c6 because I can't take it as my rook hangs but there's an interesting variation here where can I get you know the bishops putting a lot of pressure on the white position and making it really hard for him to castle and for the cost of a pawn a2 is also threatened your computer gives this as equal but I would not want to play this as white and we get a similar sort of situation in the game, actually. My opponent castles. I go bishop g5, setting up this idea that we just saw. My opponent goes queen to e1. I play bishop h6 because he is threatening queen to g3, just skewering my bishops. So I played bishop h6 to get out the skewer. The computer wants bishop to h5, which I did consider, but I thought that we would get the same position, um, which we did in the game, but the computer doesn't like queen to g3. It prefers e4. Huh. I don't know why it would make any difference if I moved this bishop instead of this bishop, but we're going to go with it. It's whatever. Uh, so queen g3, bishop h5, king h1. Presumably so that me taking here doesn't come with a check in the future. I play rook b8, just attacking this pawn. b5 is played, so I take it. And the idea is to play c6 to get this pawn run in, which is really close to promotion. I play rook takes a2, which apparently loses me the game entirely because of queen h4. What a move. Attacking my bishop. If I move my bishop, then rook takes, queen takes, c7, rook here, and queen here. Even at, you know, the 2200, 2300 level. Uh, neither of us saw this. My opponent instead took and played queen to h3. And I was worried about a potential sacrifice on e6. But I played bishop g6. And my intention was that after knight here, I was going to play queen takes b3. Just ignoring his sacrifice. Um, that was my intention. But my opponent plays knight c5, which seems to be ganging up on the e6 pawn. But that is a... it's a huge blunder because of one move. And I'll give you guys a second to see if you can find it here. It's fairly simple. Alright, so the move is queen c4. It's the purest of forks. The rook can't move to defend the knight because it's undefended on c1. My opponent plays c7 and um, I guess it's just out of desperation. And so queen takes f1 is checkmate. And that's how the game ended. So the Karo Khan can be quite, quite exciting. You know, pawns flying all over the center of the board. 
ridiculous pawn structures with rooks going to a3 and queens going to a8 like when do you see this <laughs> um you know i get a very scary looking bishop pair against my opponent's knight pair but they're not actually doing that much um my opponent's knights are nicely situated my opponent misses um a very very interesting queen h4 move here paired with c7 as i explained earlier he goes for h3 and then his plan of taking on e6 ultimately fails to queen c4 so that's the game after queen takes f1 mate obviously and i beat a 2300 which isn't bad playing the black pieces and the Karo khan so i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one